Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another video on the lore blogs that were released by ArenaNet. We've been looking at Asura Week. This video is going up as a part of a backlog that I've recorded in preparation for when I start work in a while. And uh, today we're going to be looking at an article called Snarky Little Geniuses Writing the Asura. So this is about how ArenaNet have approached the Asura as a race. Gives you a general overview about them. And while one of the blogs that was released in Asura Week was punctuated with parts of a story about an Asura named Glicks, which you may or may not have seen, it depends when I upload it. This one is punctuated with voice clips of the Asura that is actually going to be in-game. So as I go through this article, it will slowly, every now and then, I'll hand you over to listening to actually what the Asura sound like and the kinds of things they talk about. So if you don't know much about the Asura, this blog post will probably do quite well at introducing you to the race and teach you some pretty cool stuff about them. So uh, yeah, the footage in the background is possibly Guild Wars 1, maybe Guild Wars 2, really not sure at the moment uh, but the concept art that is provided with this blog post will certainly be on there too so uh, yeah let's just get started it was written by Angel McCoy I'm never sure if I'm saying that name right Angle maybe in any case they say hi it's Angel Lee McCoy the wordsmith on the Guild Wars 2 design team and I get to tell you about the work we're doing with the Asura the races of Tyria are each unique in their own special snowflake way and the Asura are the flakiest of all which is why we love them so much going into this I should probably tell you guys the Asura are probably my favourite race out of all the races in Guild Wars 2. The style that they now have in Guild Wars 2 is very different to what it was in Guild Wars 1 and I was very much a fan of the original Guild Wars 1 style. But there will be another blog post going up later where we talk about what ArenaNet have done with them and the way that they've animated them, which is quite cool. But in any case, the Asura are still my favourite so uh, I personally very much enjoyed Asura Week and this blog in particular. So the first section is called Meet the Asura. And it goes as such. Asura are diminutive, vibrant geniuses with chips on their shoulders. We first met them in Guild Wars Eye of the North, but their history might surprise some people. Namely because really we don't know very much about their history at all. Before 1078 AE, which is 250 years before the present Guild Wars 2 day, the Asura lived underground, building their civilization in giant dark caverns. They rarely came out, and few other races encountered them. As such, this is kind of the reason why during Guild Wars one, we never heard of the Asura as a race at all until the final expansion came out, Iron the North, and with this, the minions of Primordus kind of forced the Asura to the surface, and we, the players, met them for the first time. And the idea is a lot of the surface races also met them for the first time, on a wide scale. There could have been individual moments where these races met the Asura before they came to the surface, but this was really the moment where they came out for good. As the blog post goes on to explain, then Primordus, the elder fire dragon, stirred and awoke evil creatures that lived even deeper underground. Destroyers. When the destroyers swarmed forth from their pits, they drove the Asura up and out into the light of day. Many of you may remember helping save the Asura in the Eye of the North. Yeah, this was one of the stories. Eye of the North was really split into four arcs, and each arc was really about one of the races and what's happened. So you had an arc about the Norn, you had one about the Char, one about the Asura, and the last one about the Dwarves. The Dwarves, of course, aren't a playable race in Guild Wars 2, and that's because the arc about the Dwarves was really about the destruction of their race and how they essentially became extinct, while the the other three races we got to learn and interact with. The final one, of course, being the Silvari, who for a very long time remained incredibly mysterious because they are such a new race. They're only 25 years old come Guild Wars 2's time. They certainly weren't around during Eye of the North. Anyway, so yeah, this is when we first got introduced to the Asura, when they were forced to the surface from their underground caverns. While grateful to be alive, the Asura had a difficult time with the transition from subterranean society to surface dwellers. Fortunately, they're more stubborn than an Etin gnawing on a Doliac bone. They refuse to be victims and instead leverage their strengths to create an even better and bigger home for themselves. They built Ratasum, a city that takes one's breath away and have honed their alchemagical knowledge beyond that of any other race. Guild Wars 1 was fantastic because sometimes you would find Asura crews, this is the way Asura operate in small bands of people they called crews, and in a lot of places you could find the crews and find out what they were trying to do, and some of those early Asura that came to the surface formed a crew 
crew that didn't like that the surface was so open and they wanted to bring the sky down so that the surface felt more like the underground. And it was literally a crew of Asura trying to build a machine that would bring the sky down. These are the kind of crazy things that the Asura try to invent and work with and toy with. They made the surface their home. They didn't manage to bring the sky down, fortunately, but they did many other things that would make them feel just as welcome on the surface as they ever did underground. And indeed, perhaps even flourish more than they ever did down there. So then the blog gives us our first little voice clip, which I'll cut in for you guys now. It's called Concentrated Magnificence. I'm particularly fascinated by the fact that the world's smallest sentient race is also its most intelligent. What fascinates you about it? Seems fairly elementary to me. We're the top of the evolutionary chain. We're what happens when you eliminate weakness and waste. We're concentrated magnificence. And yeah, the Asura are very big-headed as well. If you're just getting to grips with the Asura from this blog post, you should probably know that. They consider themselves above all, as you just heard there. Uh, the next section is called Techno Babble, and it reads, Most Asura use big words, like Ultra Magical. With the Asura, we writers have a license to make up words, combine words to create something fantastic, and even use existing words in strange new ways. As a result, we've developed intimate relationships with our dictionaries and thesauruses. The Asura talk like the little smarty pants they are. Completely lacking in humility, they show off their genius at every turn and even exaggerate it whenever possible. You might say that they have a Napoleon complex. An Asura doesn't speak in layman's language unless absolutely necessary for communication with lesser beings. Why use a short word when you can, once again, prove your superior intelligence by using a word those around you don't understand? Sadly, that actually sums up some people I know in real life, which is uh, quite disappointing. Anyway, we get another sound clip here called Techno Babble. We get to hear some of the Asura in action with their big words. My crew's on the verge of a major discovery in the field of sensometric inspeculation. No kidding? Mine too. Except we're doing sensometric and speculation with a focus on fungal superbodies. Really? Fungal superbodies? Interesting. Excuse me, I think I hear my lab manager calling me. Nice weather we've been having. It could be improved. Oh? How? I have some ideas for a cumulopolarizer to control precipitation. <laughs> An accumulo polarizer. Half these words, uh, you'll see it in the Delix story I read, one of the other blog posts. Half these other words that the Asura mutter, I literally have no idea how to say it. It takes me a good three or four times to come out with them. So it's nice to actually be able to hear the voice actors giving it a shot themselves. Uh, the next section is called Interconnectivity, um, and it opens with a simple question. Do Asura have families? Well, of course they do. They have children, parents, and grandparents. They have the crazy uncle that nobody talks about. They have the elder brother who can do no wrong, and the great grandmother who's gone deaf. A black sheep in the family affects everyone's reputation, so family tensions among Asura run very hot. They affectionately call their children progeny or offspring. Parents have high expectations for their progeny and will go to extraordinary lengths to see that they rise above their peers. Often, an Asura's offspring will be forced to follow in their parents' footsteps, even into joining the same crew. Speaking of crews, do Asura have jobs? Yes, an Asura works on a team called a crew and is loyal to it. The Asura are often competitive and jealous, even to the point of sabotaging one another. There are no social taboos against inter-crew espionage. See, that sounds so counterproductive, and yet the Asura still, because of this crew system, manage to work their way to the top in certain types of technology. The only other race that really rivals the Asura in progressiveness, as far as technology is concerned, would be the Char. But the Char have very much mechanical and steam-powered technology, while the Asura are just miles above, and they have totally sci-fi stuff to do with the manipulation of magic, essentially. That's how their technology works, so there's a contrast there between the Char and the Asura, but it certainly looks like the Asura, regardless, kind of come out on top, as far as that's concerned, if you ask me. As a matter of fact, the blog says, intercrew espionage is expected. Imagine how fun it is to write scenes between competing Asura. Snark, snark, snark. The next voice clip's called Talk Dirty to Me. All muds are not equal, my dear. You must take into consideration the metals and the biological materials in your sample. Something as common as an embedded fossil can throw off the entire equation. I love it when you talk dirt. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I also like the sounds in the background there. I can't wait to see and sort of 
travel around Ratasim because I can just imagine so much of that weird magical stuff. I, they described the city of the Asura as just essentially pulsing with magic, which is a really interesting concept. And there you can hear like lightning or something in the background. I'm wondering how much of Ratasim is like that. Uh, the next section is called And More Snark. Sit back and watch the sass fly. A side effect of Asuran intelligence and self confidence is that the masters of the zinger. <laughs> they don't suffer fools lightly and don't believe in sparing feelings. Workers expect to get snide comments from their crew bosses and progeny expect to get it from their parents. Teen Asura, of course, give it back as good as they get. It's a part of growing up. This verbal abuse may seem mean-spirited, but the Asura don't see it that way. That's very important because the Asura are very cruel to each other and will really seem that way a lot of the time, but that's just society for them. That's just their culture. I think it's important for people to understand that about the Asura. They don't take it personally. Their competitive natures drive them to greater heights of achievement. Remember, Asura have survived against terrible odds, including their tiny statures. They've earned their attitudes and a certain amount of bravado keeps them from being victims. With their jibes, they're telling it like they see it and if you can't take the heat get out of the laboratory i think that's a nice idea because the asura are very short they're, they're the small race for guild wars too i like that they try to compensate like this because you see that in the real world all the time i've known so many short people they've got such chips on their shoulders and it's clearly just because they have such low confidence or whatever because they're short and that kind of just penetrates through the asura in such a, a wide scale it's just a part of their culture to all be arseholes to one another which is uh awesome <laughs> not to say all short people are arseholes by the way <laughs> it's just i'm sure we've all heard of little man syndrome anyway so the next voice clip is called asura and snark. Hey, sorry about your disappointment yesterday, buddy. Thanks for reminding me, Skrit Kisser. The ephemeral synergy of entropic disorder prevents it from reaching a ground state. Actually, synergy is defined as a cooperative enterprise between two or more factors. Technically, I would say process and not enterprise, but I get your meaning. And they're just sniping at each other, as you might expect. Uh, then we come into the last section, which is called heroism. Which is, it's weird, it's a weird concept that I don't often associate to the Asura. I don't know why, it's just when I think of them as a race, I never really, I find it hard to picture an Asuran hero. Even after having read the novels, where there arguably are Asuran heroes there. And obviously a big part of Guild Wars 2 is you're supposed to feel like a hero. So I think that this is quite important, and I like that the blog post actually addresses that. Uh, and it reads, Self-absorbed as they can be, the Asura understand how dangerous the dragons are. They've decided that they will save Tyria from the beasts, even if they have to do it by working with other, inferior races. They've learned that you can't put out a fire with a single drop of water, and a crew makes no progress if the genius in charge isn't supported by an army of lab assistants. In contrast to Asura and heroes, there are those who will resort to any means possible, even evil, in order to fight the dragons. These Asura gravitate towards the Inquest, an organisation that doesn't have the same moral compass as most heroic crews. They will stop at nothing, even going as far as to experiment on other sentient races to find a weapon that will destroy the Elder Dragons. The Inquest are essentially the Asuran's enemy faction. Most races have got a faction that is sort of against them. But the Inquest is an interesting one in that they still have the same goals that the Asura do. They're doing it because they want to fight the dragons. It's just they are going to be very dirty about that process. Which is an interesting idea because they justify it by saying, well, the dragons are going to kill or torture us all anyway. What are a few deaths here and there if it means that we can stop the masses from suffering the same fate? But they, they really turn quite dark, the inquest. This blog post doesn't go into them, but it does introduce them a little bit. And then we get essentially two voice clips back to back. The first one's called Group Safety. Safety. Our tactical officer is an inspiration, but lacks regard for personal safety. Perhaps we could design him an armor suit or a protective golem? That would only make him charge farther into battle. Instead, we could just make sure his replacement is fully trained. See, so they're very black and white about things. They wouldn't care sacrificing one person if they see a more logical way out. We get a single sentence before the final ending dialogue, which reads... With their short physiques, big words, and even bigger egos, if you still can't imagine how awesome it is to write for the Asura, I'll leave you with a tease. Two words, Asuran Pirates. Excelsior. And uh, that's what I'll end this video on. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow for some more Asura Week stuff, where we'll look in a lot more depth at the Asura with the last article. You scat-picking scrubs are in it now. 
you don't like interlopers who get between us and money. Mark my words. You haven't heard the last of this. Or us. <laughs> I'll see you next time.